In section 24.4.4, we are going to continue our discussion of some of the additional items that College Board might test when it comes to circles. We've got to talk about another form of the circle equation. This time, we will talk about general form. We already talked about center radius form earlier in the circles section. We know that center radius form, which is shown here, is the form from which we can extract the coordinates of the center of the circle as well as the radius length. That is why center radius form is called center radius form. General form does not make it easy for us to extract really any information whatsoever about the circle, which is why in many cases when we're given a general form circle equation, we're going to want to convert to center radius form. Let's start off here by writing down what general form is. It is shown here if you want to just copy it, but it is ax squared plus ay squared plus bx plus cy plus d equals zero. Looks slightly complex, but for those of you who are very familiar with both quadratics and circles, you should be able to see that general form is an expansion of center radius form. In other words, if we take center radius form and we FOIL, we will get general form, and indeed that is how we would move from center radius form to general form if we needed to. On this test, however, more commonly, as I mentioned a moment ago, you will need to go from general form to center radius form, and that will usually involve completing the square. Uh, for instance, you might be given a general form circle equation, and you might be asked what is the center of this circle, or what is the length of the radius of this circle, and of course, because center radius form gives you the coordinates of the center, and uh, remember the coordinates of the center are hk, and the length of the radius is the square root of whatever is on the right-hand side, if that is r squared, we just square root whatever is over there, and we get the radius length. So again, if we have a circle in general form and we want the center, the radius, we generally are going to need to convert general form to center radius form. So in terms of completing the square, most sophomores, juniors, definitely seniors, have encountered completing the square. Unfortunately, the reaction that we get most of the time is, yes, I remember learning completing the square, but I don't remember how to do it. So we are going to go through the steps of the completing the square process. You should note, however, that we have tried here to simplify the process because on this test, you generally will not be completing the square in very complex situations. For instance, you on this test will almost never need to complete the square when a, remember that a standard form quadratic looks like this, a squared plus bx plus c. So you have your coefficient in front of your quadratic term. The quadratic term is the x squared. The a is the coefficient in front of that quadratic term. The linear term is your x to the first. The coefficient in front of that linear term is the b. And then, of course, you have your constant over here. And when you complete the square on this test, usually a is just going to be 1. Usually b will be a nice, neat, even number that can be divided by 2, which is what we're going to have to do and complete the square. So the steps as we have pre presented them here will get you through most situations where you want or need to complete the square on this test. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to arrange the equation into ax squared plus bx equals c form. In other words, we're going to, if, if we have an equation, let's say we had you know equals 0 or equals 5 or equals 7, doesn't matter. We're going to take that c and we're going to move the c over to the right. We're going to get all of our constants over to the right. So how will that look here? We will just subtract the 3, subtract the 3, and we get x squared minus 6x equals 7. So now we have our ax squared bx terms on the left, and we have our constants all on the right. Next thing we are going to do here in step two is we are going to add b over 2 squared to both sides of the equation. Just keep in mind that when it comes to an equation, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Otherwise, you will unbalance the equation. So we are going to add, and you'll see why we're adding this in a moment, but we're going to add b over 2 squared to both sides of the equation. Well, our b in this case is negative 6, right? Our a is 1. There's an unwritten 1 in front of this x squared. Our b is negative 6. So b over 2 squared is going to be negative 6 over 2 squared. And that is negative 3 squared. And that is, of course, 9. So we're going to be adding 9 to the left. 
And to keep our equation balanced, we're going to add the 9 to the right as well. Now, the reason that we are adding that 9 is that that has allowed us to complete the square. By the way, there is a very specific reason that this process is called completing the square. It literally has to do with completing a square. Um, uh, if you look this up online, which you are uh, completely free to do, when you complete the square, what you're doing is you're filling in a little piece of a square. Again, I know that that's probably not clear to anybody who has not looked up completing the square recently. But again, if you're curious to know why this process is called completing the square, I encourage you to seek out some additional resources, videos, uh, you could ask your tutor. So what we now can do, this is in step three, we can factor x squared minus 6x plus 9 into a perfect square. And that perfect square will simply be x plus b over 2. Well, remember our original b was negative 6. So b over 2 is negative 3. That's what we had right there. So we are going to add a negative 3, which is the same as subtracting 3. And we get x minus 3 squared. And of course, if we were to FOIL out x minus 3 squared, we would get x squared minus 6x plus 9. That's the whole point of this process, is to be able to write a quadratic in perfect square form. So now I have x minus 3 squared equals 16. And this is the square completed. That's what I have done here. But what this might allow me to do, for instance, is I could actually solve for x right now. If I have x minus 3 squared equals 16, I can square root both sides. I get x minus 3 equals, remember, I have to account for the plus or minus 4 in this case because I am square rooting a squared quantity. So that is x minus 3 equals 4. x minus 3 equals negative 4. And what am I going to get? I'm going to get uh, 7 here and negative 1 here. So that's one of the things that completing the square allows us to do is it allows us to solve a quadratic equation. Completing the square can also allow us to convert certain quadratic equations, standard form quadratic equations, into vertex form quadratic equations or functions. Uh, so there are a lot of uses of completing the square outside of circles and you will have to do some of that stuff on this test. You will have to use completing the square occasionally to convert quadratic forms and so on and so forth. By the way, this note here, occasionally you're just going to have an expression, not an equation. So for instance, let's say we had, uh, I don't know, let's say we had x squared minus 6x plus 3 alone. What we would have to do is we would we would do the same thing that we do in step two. Obviously, we can't do step one because there's no equal sign, so we can't really rearrange the equation to get all of our constants on one side. What we would do, though, is we would still do step two. We would add the 9, but then we would also subtract the 9. And that might seem very weird, but remember that the reason that we're doing that is we don't want to change. We don't want to change the original expression. We don't want to change the value of the ex original expression. We just want to change its form. And if we add 9, we're going to end up changing the value. So we have to subtract the 9 as well. What we would do from there is we would still factor the x squared minus 6x plus 9 into that perfect square x minus 3 squared like we did over here. And now we have a negative 9 plus 3 here. Negative 9 plus 3, of course, is negative 6. So all I have done is I have taken this standard form quadratic, and I have put that standard form quadratic into what is known as vertex form. Uh, this form would actually give me the vertex. The vertex here would be 3, negative 6. If you're not familiar with that, you need to go back and review section 12. But, but anyway, that's what we would do if we're dealing with an expression rather than an equation. Add the b over 2 squared term, but then also subtract it, and so on and so forth. Let's take a look at an example before we get to circles themselves. We'll take a look at an example where we have to convert between quadratic forms. So in example 13, if you want to try this on your own, go ahead and do it. If you are very familiar with completing the square, I don't know that you'll have too much of a problem with number 13. If you're not familiar with completing the square, you're going to want to watch me work through this. The graph of y equals x squared minus 4x plus 9 in the xy plane is a parabola. Okay, we already know that. This is a quadratic. 
function. So of course, its graph will be a parabola, write an equivalent form of the equation that includes the x and y coordinates of the vertex as constants. Okay, it can be a little bit hard if you've not seen a lot of questions like this to decode what's going on here. But this is a big hint. Whenever you are on a quadratics question, and the question is telling you to express the quadratic in, equi in an equivalent form, it's a quadratic function conversion question. We're going to be converting from one form to another. And in this case, the big hint that we want to go from standard form, we're already we're given standard form here. So we, we should know that we're starting in standard form. The big hint that we want to go from standard form to vertex form is the fact that they're telling us that they want an equivalent form of the equation that shows the x and y coordinates of the vertex. And we know that vertex form does that. That's what vertex form is. It shows us the x and y coordinates of the vertex of the parabola. So here's how we're going to do this. We are going to write down y equals x squared minus 4x plus 9. That is the original quadratic that we're given in standard form. Of course, now what we do is we follow the steps above. We are going to add uh, the b over 2 squared term to both sides of the equation. In this case, that is going to be this negative 4. That's the b negative 4 over 2 squared. And that is negative 2 squared. And that is 4. So what we're going to do is to the left side, we're going to add the plus 4. And to the right side, we're going to add the plus 4. Um, I probably should have started by subtracting that nine from both sides, but that's okay. I'm just going to keep it over here for now. Uh, technically, the steps above did tell us to get all of our constants to the other side. So we probably should have done that, but that's okay. I'm going to add the four over here and the four over here. So all I've done is I've added the b over two squared term to both sides. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor all of this into that perfect square. So I'm going to end up with y plus four equals x minus two squared, remember that minus 2 is, is just that guy there. It's the b over 2 term. Uh, and then I have the plus 9 over here. And now what I'm going to do to get this into vertex form is I'm going to subtract that 4 from both sides. And I get this. And now, anybody who is familiar with vertex form knows that that 2 is my h. That is the x coordinate at the vertex. And this 5 over here, that is my k. That is the y coordinate at the vertex. So of course, my vertex would be 2 comma 5 here. And now I have an equivalent form of my equation that shows the x and y coordinates of the vertex as constants. So the equivalent form of the equation would be this. And we are done. That is the quadratic that we're dealing with here in vertex form. Now, on example 14, let's finally get to those pesky circles. If you want to try example 14, if you're feeling brave, go ahead and pause the video and do it on your own. In example 14, we've got the graph in the xy plane of the equation above is a circle. It should be pretty clear that this is a general form equation of a circle. Determine the following for this circle. So what do we need? We need the coordinates of the center and the length of the radius. What we need to do here is we need to get center radius form, which we know we do by completing the square. The process is going to be slightly different here because there's going to be a couple of additional steps we need to take. Like for instance, we're going to want to group our terms together, our x terms and our y terms. So that's the first thing I'm going to do here. Uh, x squared minus 10x plus y squared plus 6y. And I'm going to take the constant over to the right like I'm supposed to. So I've grouped my terms. I've got my x terms here, my y terms here. Now to each group, I'm going to add that b over 2 squared term. So my b here is negative 10. My b here is 6. b over 2 here would be negative 5. Negative 5 squared is 25. So that's x squared minus 10x. I'm going to add that 25 there. And then over here, I've got my y squared. b over 2 will be 3. 3 squared, uh, let me do that 6y first. So b over 2, that is 6 over 2. That is 3. 3 squared is 9. And remember that these two things that I've added to the left must also be added to the right, or else I will change my equation, and I don't want to do that. And now, of course, I can write these two groups of terms, the x terms and the y terms, as some perfect 
squares. So this one is going to be x minus 5. Remember that minus 5 is just half of the b term. And this will be y, not x, y plus 3. Again, that 3 is just half of the b term. And over here, I'm going to get 36. Uh, 2 plus 25 is 27. 27 plus 9 is 36. And now look at that, folks. I've got my nice, neat center radius form. And therefore, I know my coordinates of my center are going to be the opposite of this, which is 5, opposite of this, which is negative 3. So that's 5, negative 3. And my radius is going to be, remember that 36 is the radius squared, which means that the radius itself is 6. I do not need to account for the negative 6 there because the length of a radius cannot be negative. So what I have done, again, is I've used completing the square to get my circle equation from general form to center radius form. And from center radius form, I can extract the coordinates of the center and the length of the radius. That is what center radius form is all about. There is one other way to do this process. If you are on the calculator section, the TI-84 and similar calculators do have an app called the Conix app. A circle is a conic. And the Conix app can be used to take a general form circle equation and extract from it very quickly and very simply the center and the radius. If you want to know how to use that app, again, there are plenty of resources out there, videos. Uh, and of course, you can also ask your tutor to show you how to use the Conics app. So that is it for completing the square and how completing the square will help you on some quadratics questions and on some circle questions as well.